Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm really glad you could join me once again. So in today's episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you an incredible new special something that I bought for the house that I think you're going to love. Also planting up some plants in my planters outside in the garden. And finally, I have been in London this weekend celebrating my friend Nathan Rowlandson's birthday. We've been staying at the Ned, so I'm going to show you around the hotel and the room that I stayed in. So I hope that you enjoy this episode. Now, before I begin, I wanted to share a little something with you. Now, as you know, since the beginning of the year, I've been going on a little bit of a health kick. So I decided to quit drinking alcohol. I'm pleased to say that that is still the case and I feel amazing. But I also started to look at some of my personal healthcare products that I use every day, going through each one and seeing how they serve me and not just myself, but the environment. So one of the things that I really wanted to change was something that I use every single day, which is deodorant and body wash. So I have been using this. Now this is a product from a company called Wild. Can you see? And this is a natural deodorant. Now, obviously the very first wonderful thing is this reusable canister, which the deodorant comes in. And I love it because it's personalized with my name on. So that is the very first thing that I love about this. But also the fact that this is completely recyclable. It, is, it doesn't use any single use plastics. And this is refillable. So that means that you get to keep this case for your lifetime and you can just buy the refills. They're really easy to use. You just put them in here. Once this is gone, you can replace it, which is fantastic for the environment and just makes me feel a lot better about the choices that I'm making every single day. So as well as the deodorant, I've also been using the body wash, which is fantastic. They both contain shea butter and coconut oil, which just, I find, really nourishes the skin and gives you kind of like a spa-like experience at home. This deodorant smells so different to any other deodorant I've used. In fact, I would even go as far to say that it's almost like wearing a fragrance because it smells so beautiful, whereas you know, other deodorants don't really smell that great. This one seems to last all day and you get to enjoy the fragrance of it. So yeah, it is completely powered by plants. It doesn't contain any parabens, sulfates, chemicals, or nasties. It is completely natural, vegan, cruelty-free. So that also makes me happier when I have to use a product every single day, knowing that it is wonderful for the environment, doesn't harm any animals, and is great for me, just makes me feel on top of the world. So yes, I always like to share things that I've discovered and think you will love here. And I really do think this is a great product, something that is all round a goodie that we can all benefit from. And I'm delighted to let you know that I have partnered with Wild today to be able to offer you a 20% discount on their products. So to get your 20% off, you can scan the QR code that is on the screen now, or you can click the link in the description box. Now, when it comes to checkout, you need to enter the code NICHOLAS20 to get your 20% off. And I will just say that this is a limited time offer. So if you do want to take advantage of that 20% of that off, then make sure that you head over as quickly as possible so that you don't miss out. Again, to get your 20% off, you can scan the QR code that is on screen now or head to the link in the description box Enter code NICHOLAS20 for your 20% discount. And I really hope that you love this product as much as I do. So let me show you what I've been doing this weekend in London. It has been a really wonderful, fun week. So I hope that you will enjoy this episode. So it is really early in the morning. I thought that I would get up and give you a little tour of the hotel. It's always best to do this early in the morning because there'll be nobody around. I've just walked through the lobby and that is indeed the case. So this is the Ned. 
in London, and this is one of my favourite hotels. It's in the heart of the city, so you've got all of the beautiful historic landmarks. And this used to be the home of the former Midland Bank, and it was designed by Sir Edwin Lutyens. And if you have heard me talk about him before, you will know that he's one of my favourite architects. So let's go in and have a look. So here we have the lobby and this really is a colossal hotel and what I love about it is that it feels exactly like a very exclusive old school bank, kind of like something that you might see in Harry Potter. And I have to say at the weekend it is absolutely packed busy in here. Last night it was heaving. This whole lobby is completely filled with people. In that central aisle that you can see here, there was a jazz band performing. Everybody was dancing all around here. People were sitting having cocktails, dinner. It is so vibrant and full of life here. So that is why I'm up so early this morning to show you around because there's hardly anyone. There's just a few people having breakfast here. Other than that, completely empty, which you wouldn't believe after what I saw last night. So this little central island here, in the days when this was a bank, this would be kind of like a direction point. So there would be people standing on that who worked at the bank, and you would walk up and tell them who you wanted to see, and they would point you in the right direction, which I think is so wonderful. But yeah, I think this decor is super chic. Very old money, old school, lots of wood, leather, and I just love all these little touches like the lampshades and the little lamps on here. So here is the Lutyens Grill. We actually had dinner there last night and it was incredible. You know when you go into a restaurant and there are white tablecloths, the waiters are wearing white jackets with gloves, that is the kind of experience you're going to get. It is beautifully lit by lamplight, so it's quite dark and moody, and it just feels like a very exclusive experience. Something that is quite rare nowadays, so that is fun. So this, as I mentioned before, used to be the Midland Bank. It is a historic building, and it has been transformed into the Ned Hotel. And Ned is the nickname of Sir Edwin Lutyens, so that is where that comes from. And this place is now owned by Soho House, and they've done an amazing job of transforming it into this incredibly elegant space. They have 250 bedrooms, and they have 10 restaurants and bars, so there is lots of choice if you stay here, or if you just want to come for lunch, brunch, dinner, breakfast. There's choice, you can pretty much have your pick of anything you want. And so, down here is another area of the lobby and I think this is another restaurant here. Last night everybody was sitting at those little chairs having drinks, dinner and cocktails. It is just, honestly, the ambience is so fun and it feels kind of like coming into the 1930s when everybody was just having so much fun and uh, one of those old school glamorous nights out. And as it is so early in the morning they're just getting everything back to normal. I'm sure it went on till late last night, the party. Um, so yeah, but it is difficult to share how fun it is here b without all of the people, but you just would not have been able to hear me at all if uh, I didn't come so early in the morning. And here is Sir Edwin Lutyens, the man himself, who presides over the lobby. We've got beautiful flowers, they're real. I just love this place, it's so cool. Down here is the old safety deposit. So there is a vault down there and they've now turned this into a club. So we actually went there two nights ago. It's Nathan's birthday so we had an incredible dinner at Claridge's which I'll tell you more about. And then we came back here with all of our group and we went down there. It is wonderful. I wish I could show you um, you go through the actual vault, which is 
very strange if you have claustrophobia and that inside it is chic and glamorous. It feels kind of like a party that you shouldn't really be at, something that is secretive, but yeah, super fun. So yes, this is a real, I would say a party style hotel, but glamorous, elegant partying rather than wild partying. And also, if you're just looking for something elegant, chic, and old school, then this is definitely a great option. Nathan is here, he's doing his photography. And then, this is the little, we had lunch here yesterday. Um, and people are just coming in for breakfast now. So I'm going to go up to the room, I'll show you around, and then we're going to have breakfast in the room. Okay, so let me take you to the suite. We've got a little visitor here, Peggy Rowlinson, who I'm just looking after while Nathan is taking some photos downstairs. This is the suite. I think it is utterly charming and chic. It's got that old world feel. And what I like about it the most is the muted, dark interiors. Now, I'm not usually a fan of brown wood, to be honest, but I really like it here. I'm just going to turn off the chandelier because I think you get a better sense of the room that way. And yeah, the, fe the main feature of the room is this four post bed. And this has been the most luxurious, comfortable place to sleep over the last two nights. Just look at this paisley fabric. It is like something you would see on the Orange Express. I think it's so charming. And I just would absolutely love to have a bed like this at home. Sleeping in a four post bed is so romantic. And I love the three large European pillows at the back. I always like to have those on my bed. And then you've got a choice of cushion, which I always appreciate in a hotel because it can be really hard to get comfortable. So at the back, you've got a nice squishy, soft pillow. And then here, feathers again, but much more firm. And that is exactly what I have at home. So that is perfect. I've had the best night's sleep, which even in some of the most beautiful hotels, it can be hard to have if you don't have the right pillow. So yes, very 1930s, glamorous, I love the interior in here. So the Ned is actually owned by Soho House and you really can tell that with the interior. The little touches like the pink stool, that is very Soho House. And then the lamps, this one here, and definitely the dark moody fabrics. Like in the center of the room, we have this large ottoman. The quality of the video does decrease when I zoom out like that, especially in um, dark rooms, but you get a, a better sense of the room. So through here, we have the bathroom and nice big mirror. I hate when you're staying in a hotel and you can never check out your outfit if they don't provide a proper mirror, but there is a great one there. And then just beautiful, simple elegance. One of my favorite things are these wall lights. I think they're so glamorous and I've been looking for some actually to replace the black ones in my living room and I really do like those. I reckon they're probably Soho House. Marble sink, clean, elegant lines, uh, a little table with some cosmetics, the bath, which I had last night deep, Beautiful, I had a lovely soak in there, and then the shower. So a very elegant, quite masculine bathroom. The whole place feels a little bit masculine, like a gentleman's club in a way. And that, is, I guess, is the signature of Soho House. But I really do love a hotel bathroom. Peggy. And then through here, this is the only suite in the whole hotel which has a terrace. So it's a bit gray and dark today. I'm gonna to show you outside. Oh my gosh, it's raining. So 
here is the terrace, which I imagine on a spring summer day is perfect. You could have a party up here, entertain friends, or maybe have breakfast, sunbathe, not something you're gonna be able to do today, definitely not, but a great space. And up there, you have the rooftop, which is a pool. We went up there yesterday, it was sunny. It's gorgeous. Um, so yeah, summer is coming, spring's coming. And I think this is a gorgeous angle of the room. You really get to see the beauty, the cohesiveness. So I hope that you've enjoyed looking around and please let me know what you liked the most about this room. Good morning. One of the things that I love about the hotel is the fluffy slippers and gowns that you get. But my very favorite thing in a hotel is always the breakfast. So just ordered room service. I love having breakfast in the room, especially in bed as well. That is real luxury, something that I never do at home. So when you're in a hotel, I think it's a rite of passage that you have to do. There's a terrace out there which would be perfect, probably in a few weeks actually here in London, it would be perfect to eat out there early spring. It's quite warm. It's a little bit noisy out there, so we've got the doors closed. Um, so yes, breakfast. Ordered a selection of things. We have granola bowl. I am a huge fan of granola. I think it is one of the best creations on earth with all of the crunchy, nutty, fruity, beautiful honeyness. Eggs Benedict, something that I never have. Again, when I'm staying in a hotel, I like to do things that I wouldn't normally do every day, and I think Eggs Benedict is delicious, but very sinful. Have an Earl Grey tea, a little teacup, and some sourdough toast. And then Nathan has ordered Eggs Benedict. And we have a selection of pastries there. Uh, some green juice, a fresh mint tea, and a little sausage for Peggy, who is sleeping in her bed. So, last weekend, I went up north to Caithness to celebrate my friend Kim's birthday. So, her parents live in Caithness in a beautiful Scottish lodge, which I just love staying at because it's so cosy and comfortable. They've got fireplaces in nearly every room and they always have them lit and it just feels like a getaway. And I always love getting out of Edinburgh and going to stay there. They always treat me so kindly. So it's always a treat to stay with them. So yes, we went up to Cape Nest for her birthday and on the way home, so the journey takes about five and a half hours in the car. And so on the way home after our weekend, we decided that we were gonna stop in this little town called Dornock. Now this is a beautiful village style town with a cathedral. And it kind of reminds me of something that you'd find in the Cotswolds because it has this honey colored stone, which is quite rare for Scotland. And just the feel of the village, the way that it's laid out, is so pretty and beautiful. So this village um, was in the spotlight quite a few years ago when Madonna got married there. She got married to Guy Ritchie in the cathedral in this Scottish town, which was a bit surprising because it's kind of not really on the map and it's a little quaint town in Scotland. So yeah, you could imagine the chaos that descended upon this place when Madonna decided to get married there. So we stopped for lunch and then after that we thought we'd have a little look around some of the shops. Now it was Monday so I don't know about in the rest of the world where you are but here on a Monday in these kind of smaller towns things tend to be closed after the weekend. I guess they don't really have a lot of footfall and so it doesn't really make sense to open them. But there was a little charity shop that was open and I walked inside and I immediately saw something really special. I still can't get over that I managed to 
nab this incredible bargain of my whole life. And the really strange thing is that just last week I was thinking that I really wanted this item. Not this particular item, but this category of item. So I am going to show you what it is now. I'm really, really excited. And I think you would agree that I've got an incredible bargain and I've been very, very lucky. So let me show you. So, are you ready to see what I got? Here it is. So yes, I walked into the charity shop and I immediately saw this. Now this is a Royal Albert Bone China tea set. And as you can see, it is a full complete tea set. We have a teapot, a coffee pot, cake stand, milk jugs, butter dish, cake plates and 12 cups and saucers as well as I think these are sugar bowls, bowls for jam, whatever you want to use them for, there's three of them, two sandwich plates there and <laughs> this set has never been used, you can see it's still got the little thing on here to protect the spout but the most incredible thing about this set is that it was only £55. So when I saw this tea set, it, it was just there, like a halo of light around it when I walked in. And I said to the lady, is that for the whole thing? And she said, yes, it's literally been out for 10 minutes. We've just literally put it out. And so obviously I bought it on the spot. But it's such a strange thing because I was just thinking, I really, really want a new tea set. You may remember that a few years ago I had a bit of a declutter and I got rid of a lot of my things. And just last week I was thinking, oh, spring is coming. It would be so nice to have a little tea party in the garden and I don't really have a full set. So this was just a great case of happenstance. Right place, right time. And I've got myself a full set of Royal Albert Bone China teaware. Now, I'll be completely honest, I probably wouldn't have chosen this design myself. I mean, it is a little bit chintzy, and I'm not really into these ridged designs, but it is such a good quality tea set. Royal Albert China is exquisite. You can see that it's beautifully made, and it has a significance because this thistle is Scottish. And I'm not sure whether you know of the film called Brigadoon, but it is about a fictional village in Scotland which rises from the mist every hundred years. And this gentleman travels to Scotland and he, he comes upon this village and he falls in love with a woman there but then the village disappears for another hundred years. So that's the story of Brigadoon. And I think it's really charming. So yeah, I've got this incredible tea set. I just can't believe how lucky I've been to nab this. It's such a steal. And at first, because I knew the value of it, I, I looked online and there's one similar, but it doesn't have as many cups and saucers. And it also doesn't have the coffee pot or the cake stand. That is selling on Etsy for £700. So at the beginning I was thinking maybe I'll just sell it and buy something that I really want. But I just thought this was meant to be for me. I've wanted a tea set. It has a gorgeous Scottish design. It's the first proper full tea set that I've had with all of these cups and saucers and everything else. So I'm definitely going to hold on to it and keep it and I'm sure that here on the channel will get a lot of enjoyment and use out of it. So yeah, I just when I saw this in the shop, the first thing I thought was everyone on YouTube is going to just love this. So I'm really happy with it. I think it's gorgeous. Just look at this tea set, this teapot. Never been used, completely perfect. I washed it by hand the whole set the morning after I got home so it's looking all clean and new and I'm actually going to store it in 
this cupboard here, now that I'm not drinking anymore, this will be the home for the tea set. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to have a lovely home here in Edinburgh with me. And I'm excited to have a tea party. I also wanted to show you these new plates that I've got. These are Limoges. And they're a bit different to what I usually have because they have blue in them. But I just thought they were so pretty. These were not from the charity shop. These are from a company called Maison Fate. I'll link their Instagram in the description because it is such a beautiful online store. And they're having they're launching a new ebook soon about setting the table. So I will share that with you as well. I still haven't managed to do the mirror. Um that still needs to be done. The store where I go is quite far and um, I haven't been able to get there yet, but I will do that soon. But definitely the highlight of the week, is the of the year in fact, is the tea set, which I think is just perfect. What do you think? Now the funny thing about this is that before we went into the charity shop, I decided to go and have a look in the cathedral. So I went in and it was beautiful, the sun was coming through, and there was a little box and they were asking for donations for the maintenance and repairs. So I never, ever, ever have cash on me. But the week before I'd been staying with my parents and for some reason my mother had given me a five pound note and it was in my pocket still. So I remembered that and I put the five pound note into the box and then I came out and walked into the charity shop and this tea set was there. So I kind of like to think that the man upstairs was saying thank you for donating to the cathedral and he, he decided to give me the bargain of the century. So I just like that little thing of, you know, you do something that's good and you don't really think about it, but it comes back to you in other ways. So I just thought that I would share that with you. I thought it was quite sweet and fun. So now I'm going to go out into the garden. I went to my favourite plant store here in Edinburgh, Grow Urban, which is owned by my friend Graham. It's a cute little store with house plants, but they also have plants for the garden. So my window boxes were looking a little bit bare. I haven't really touched them for some time. Uh, but the bulbs from last year, the daffodils, are starting to come through and on their own they look a bit sad. So I went to Grow Urban and I bought some new plants. So I'm going to go into the garden now and plant them and I think it will just spruce up the garden, make it look a little bit more fresh. In time for spring, these bright sunny days really do boost and lift me up. So I want to be out in the garden enjoying my time. So let's do that. So first of all, let me show you what I've got for the planters. So I always like to pad them out with some kind of trailing plant. And this is a, an ivy, trailing ivy. I've used this in the planters before. It looks really great. The problem was last time I went away for two weeks and we had a heat wave and they scorched and died. So I had to, I've had to replace them now. So hopefully I'm not really going anywhere too soon and there's definitely not going to be a heat wave so they should be able to last so I like to put two on either side and then plant something in the middle um, so let me just read this this is a Hedera helix a very easy to grow plant which purifies the air in your home ivy can clamber climb and trail and will grow quickly in the current condition correct conditions Ivy prefers cooler temperatures, no direct sunlight, stick to low medium situations, keep the soil lightly moist at all times and check regularly to ensure that it doesn't dry out. So that is those. And then I have these Christmas Carol, Helleborus Christmas Carol. Do we have a little card in here? Yes. <clears throat> so let's have a look at this. A semi-evergreen perennial shrub, flowering with large white blooms from December to March, livening up your garden for the winter, perfect for a patio pot, window box bed or border. Shade tolerant, plant in well-drained soil, 
water to keep soil just moist and feed in autumn and spring. So even though this is a winter plant, um, for now it will look great, just for the next few weeks at least. And also I like the foliage, and then this will probably die back, and, um, and then I can just put something else in there, and then it will come back in December, which is quite nice. That's what you have to remember about um, potting your plants, that they do come back, so it's never a waste. And I just wanted to make it look pretty today, so I'm going to plant this up and see how we get on. So first of all, I like to make this gap here. A nice space, and then just gently easing this out of its pot. And then I like to just rip, just get some of these roots loose, otherwise they will be a little bit stuck. And then we can pop this in. Looks like it's best here. And there we go. Some more soil here. Just bed in. Make sure it's secure. Securely in, so it's got a chance to bed. There we go, and it's as easy as that. And what you can do, just taking out these, and I'm going to transplant these into a little pot so that we can have them for next year. And now I can actually plant these bulbs back into a pot, which I'm going to do. Just put some soil in here. And then if we take quite a big one here, put that there. Let's take some out. Put that in there. OK, 
okay. Well, I think that will work. I've never really transplanted bulbs before. I mean, it's almost the over for these anyway, for the season. But I can just put this pot somewhere in the garden here, maybe replant it with other bulbs throughout the, the spring and the summer, and then next winter these will come back again, which is such a beautiful gift <laughs> from nature. A lovely morning outside. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. I look forward to seeing you next time, but until then, take care. Bye-bye.